This video will give you helpful information on getting up from the floor. Getting up from the floor can be divided into three phases. So I have separated those phases out as part one, first you're getting off your back. Part two is simply getting onto your hands and knees or all fours. From there, part three, you want to get from your all fours position all the way up into standing. So in order to do that, you need to get on your knees or half kneeling positions. So we're going to talk about each of those steps to get up from the floor. If you need additional help to get up from the floor so that you can do it safely, I'm going to go over how to use a chair or a walker or a cane to help you get into the standing position. And then lastly, I'm going to talk about exercises that can help reduce difficulty with getting up from the floor. But ultimately, if you are having any trouble, it really would be best if you see a physical therapist to help guide you in terms of what exercises you need and the best uh, methods of getting up from the floor in your situation. This is part one, getting off of your back. If you're on your back and you need to roll, just reach with your arm and reach with your knee and then the weight of your arm and your leg will help you roll. Now, what you can also do is do it with more effort and try and exaggerate the movement and then you can be more effective. So then it's easier. In order to get onto your hands and knees, you have two options. The first option is getting up onto your hands and knees from your side. And the second option is getting onto your hands and knees from your stomach. Depending on your capabilities, you may find that one option is easier than the other one. So we're going to first take a look at the considerations and how to do option one first. If you're getting up from your side and you have one arthritic knee, let's say your left knee is arthritic, try to avoid getting up from your left side because you're going to have a lot more pressure on that knee if you get up on the side that you have the arthritis. So if you have arthritis in your left knee, then you may want to get up from your right side. And similarly holds true if you have like a lot of arthritis in your left shoulder, you may want to think about trying to get up from the other side. The bottom line is that you get up from whichever side that works best for you. When getting up from your side, your hip abductor muscles play an important role to help lift your hip up into the all fours position. So you need to have strong hip muscles, the hip abductors, to help you get onto your all fours. Getting up from your side is not as strenuous on your arms as it is if you were to roll onto your stomach and push yourself up onto all fours. So if you have some trouble with your arms with pushing, this would be a better method for you. Getting up from your side is typically much more tolerable on your back if you have back problems as opposed to getting up from your stomach. So just another consideration when you're figuring out what might work best for you. But the bottom line, the best thing is to just try it and see what works for you. The first step in getting off of your side is propping yourself up on your elbow. There are three things you need to do in order to get propped up on your elbow. So the first thing is pushing with your hand into the floor. The second thing is bringing the top shoulder forward. The third thing is sliding the elbow back. Now that you're propped up on your elbow, what you want to do is draw your knees up. If you don't bring them up high enough, what happens is when you attempt to get onto your hands and knees, you end up on your stomach instead of your hands and knees. So let me just show you. So my knees are up high. I'm going to get on my hands and knees like that. So that worked out real nice. Now I'm going to have my legs more straight and then I'm going to get on my hands and knees and then I end up on my stomach. Here are some considerations if you're getting up onto all fours from your stomach. First of all, it's a lot friendlier on your knees if you have knee arthritis because the pressure is evenly distributed. Secondly, I found that people with back problems tend not to be able to tolerate this method as well as the method of getting up from your side onto all fours. 
And then lastly, having weak arms can make it more difficult for you to get up because in essence, you're doing like a modified push up. So that can be rectified with arm exercises, but that just is a consideration. It's not unusual when I see people roll either on their side or to get onto their stomach, they get their hand caught underneath them and then it's hard for them to get it out. So there's two methods that we're gonna take a look at uh, with rolling so your hand doesn't get caught. And the one is tucking your hand underneath you before you roll. And then the other one is putting your arm overhead. So we're gonna take a look at those. This first method is the hand tuck. You just bring it underneath you. It doesn't have to go all the way under. When you roll on your stomach, there it's free. Now the back view, you'll see, you just roll over and you see your hand is free. The other method is your arm overhead. You roll all the way onto your stomach and then you see that your hand is free and you just walk your hands up from there. Now that you're in the position of being on your hands and knees, from there, you're gonna stand up. Now there's two methods that you can use to stand up. There's one where you lift up your knees and you walk your hands back, and the other one you get into a half kneeling position, and we're gonna talk about both. Once you're on your hands and knees and you're gonna stand up, if you have two arthritic knees, this is one option of getting up uh, with less irritation to your knees. And you start out by first hooking your feet back and then you're gonna push down so that you can lift both your knees at the same time. You're gonna walk your hands back and then you're gonna walk your hands up your thighs. From your hands and knees, another way to get up into a standing position is you bring one foot up forward and make sure the foot's flat on the ground and then you're gonna put your hand on that knee. Keep this hand on the ground for balance. Then you're gonna push with your hands to get, allow that foot to come forward. Now when you bring it forward, allow your feet to be uneven because that will give you a more stable base once you stand up. And then you lift that hand and walk your hands up your thighs. When trying to get up from a half kneeling position, I found that you really don't know which way is the easiest for you unless you try it out. So try with your right leg up first and see how that works for you. And then try with your left leg up first and see how that works for you. And usually factors that play into what makes it easier is flexibility, arthritis, and strength. So it's usually one or all of those three that determine that one way is gonna be easier for you. For some individuals, it's simply not safe to stand up without additional support. So I'm gonna talk about three options, using a chair, which is the most common, but then also you could possibly use a walker, and we'll talk about that. And then using a cane, which offers the minimal support, but in each situation, you do what is safe. That's the main thing. So if we're gonna start out talking about using a chair. When using a chair, there's a couple of considerations. First, there is your foot placement, which is actually similar to when you were getting up from all fours, but I want you to see a little video clip just showing how it's done. And then the second video what that you're gonna look at is where you put your hands when you're getting up from a chair. That makes a big difference in terms of leverage and making it easier for you to stand up. Let's take a peek. Having a chair makes it a lot easier, but if you're using like a car table chair like this, don't push down on the edge, be a little bit more on the center. It gives you more stability. And what you can do, there's a couple options. There's, you can bring that one foot up and then stand up from there. Now, some people don't have the flexibility in their hips to do that. So another option is to hook your feet on the ground. And then you can see as I'm standing up, I don't have to bend my hips too much. And I come straight up and then I walk my feet forward. And then from there, I turn around and have a seat. Sometimes when people have weakness in their arms, when they need to push like this, it's hard for them to help hoist themselves up because the arms are so weak. So what they need to do is put their elbows on the seat 
and then that takes out the arms and then you can push yourself up much easier. Now what I often see when people are getting up from the chair, they'll get up like this and they'll just automatically grab for the armrest, thinking that it's a higher position so it's a better position. But actually this puts your arms at a disadvantage and makes it harder to get up. So when you're getting up, it takes a lot more effort. So if you get up from the chair, regardless if you have some weakness in your arms and you're gonna go like this, or your arms are okay, you have better leverage if you have your hand on the seat of the chair instead of the arms to help yourself get up. If you're using a walker to get up, if you're with somebody, it would be good if they could hold the walker down to stabilize it for you. If you're by yourself, it would be good to, if you're able to, to roll it up against some solid furniture or against a wall, just to stabilize it for when you're getting up. So those are the two main things. So we're gonna take a look on how you can get up with the walker. If you're not close to any chair to help you up, if you use a walker, you can use your walker to help you stand up. And what you can do is the lower rungs of your walker have your hands about centered in there and you can bring it closer to you. And you can do it one of two ways. You can either bring one foot up and then stand up and then walk your hands up. Or you can lift up both your knees, hook your feet on the ground, lift up both your knees and then walk your feet forward and then stand up from there. When you're getting up with the method of raising both of your knees, make sure the walker is close to you and that your arms are parallel with the walker or perpendicular to the ground. So the pressure is directly down. If your walker is a little too far ahead, you're gonna end up pushing the walker away from you, which you absolutely don't wanna do. Using a cane to stand up is truly not the most stable thing to use to get up from the ground. But given a situation, if you're outdoors and you're walking and you've got nothing else to use to get yourself up from the ground and there's nobody around to help you get up, then a cane is better than nothing. So let's take a look on how to do it. So you can either grab it where the bent part is or grab it on top here. Uh, this is a little more difficult to push down on, but everybody's different, so just see what works best for you. So I'm just gonna put my hand over here. And then when I get up, I bring one foot up. You decide which foot you wanna bring up. It feels more stable to you. I'm gonna bring up this foot and push with this hand on the ground, and then I'm gonna use this for support and then bring my foot up. Now, doing it that method, I need to have enough hip flexibility to do that. And then another way of doing it is to lift both your knees and walk your feet forward and then stand up. Now, that might be less stable for you, but just do what works best and is safest. Now, let's take a look at what you can do to reduce the difficulty with getting up from the floor. Uh, one area that you can address is strengthening and stretching exercises. Now, if you go to a physical therapist, they're very good at pointing out your faults. So they can guide you as far as what's weak, what's tight, and then give you a really good customized exercise program to help you do better. Now, another thing you can do, it's called functional exercise. It's the things that are difficult for you to do in getting up from the floor, you actually do those things to make it easier. And I'll show you how you can do that. And then lastly, we're gonna look at a couple of devices to either reduce your knee discomfort or help you up and down from the floor. When getting up from the floor, you use a lot of muscles for each stage of getting up. And I have found that getting up from your side into an all fours position, people that have significant weakness in their hip abductor muscles had the most difficulty with getting up onto their hands and knees from their side. So that's why I uh, emphasize that muscle group because once they're stronger, they're able to get up a lot easier. So let me just show you some exercises to help with that muscle. 
There are many different exercises that you can use to strengthen a specific muscle. And physical therapists are really good at figuring out which exercise that you can best tolerate that's challenging and not too easy. So um, here are just, I'm just gonna give you a couple of exercises. They may or may not be helpful for you depending on your level of ability. But this, these two exercises specifically uh, address the hip abductors. Um, other exercises, you could do sidestepping or standing with lifting your leg out to the side. That's a little bit less strenuous, uh, something to try. But I picked these two exercises because they really give that muscle a good workout. Uh, the top one is called hip abduction. You're literally just lifting your leg up and down. You'll see a video soon. And then the next one is hip abduction with a forward and backward swing. And that's a heavy duty. That's, that's a hard one to do, but it really strengthens the muscles well. So let's take a look. So this is the hip abduction exercise. Keep the hip rolled forward, your hand there to keep it there, and you lift and raise your leg, keeping your leg back. Doing it on the bed is really helpful. Then you lift your leg up and swing it forward and back. That's a killer. You're going to feel the burn on that one. If you can't tolerate it or it hurts, you stop. The next few exercises that help strengthen the hip abductors is simply going from your side to partially lifting your hip and shoulder and then back down. And then the last one on this page is the you go all the way from your side to your hands and knees and then all the way back down. I like this exercise because you're using all the muscles you need to use in order to get onto your hands and knees. So you're not really just strengthening the hip abductors, you're strengthening all the other muscles that you need to do to get onto your hands and knees. And so these kinds of exercises are called functional exercises because they're duplicating the activity that you're trying to do. So I think they're very practical and they really have a lot of merit. So let's take a look. So here in this first exercise, you're not going fully up on your hands and knees, you're just going part way. You're using your hip abductors, your core muscles, both your arms are working in this, so it's a good exercise. Now with this exercise, you're all coming all the way up onto your hands and knees. You separate your knees and your hands for stability and then go back down. And you do that up and down. It works your core, your hip muscles, everything. Very functional, good overall exercise. So a couple things with doing the exercises on the bed is that when you're going up onto your knees, the mattress is very gentle on your knees. So if you have arthritis, then it's a lot more comfortable to practice this. And then the other thing is when you're working on the bed is you wanna make sure you're centered or just away from the edge of the bed so that when you're going to the side, you don't fall off the bed. You know, so that's just the other thing. And then also, uh, I've had individuals that can maybe do one or two repetitions and then they're completely exhausted. But it's good to work yourself up to like 10 repetitions if you can, if you don't hurt anywhere. Uh, not all in one day, but I mean, you work, that would be your goal. So maybe you can do one or two reps today. Tomorrow you do one or two reps, maybe add another one if your body can do that. And then, so you build up your stamina because you wanna have reserve stamina if you need to get up from the floor so that you don't lose your strength as you're trying to do it because you're getting so fatigued. When getting up from your stomach into an all fours position, the primary muscle that I've found to really have an impact on being able to get into that position is the triceps. Now you're using a lot of different muscles. You're using your pectoral muscles, you're using your core, your hip flexors. Uh, a lot of different muscles are playing in, but the triceps is gonna be my focus for this particular activity. So again, we can target the muscle and then we can also strengthen them doing functional activities. So let's take a look. This is a chair push-up for tricep strengthening. Having the feet underneath you helps the triceps lift yourself. Then having the feet out further makes the triceps work harder. 
another functional exercise where you can use your triceps and your core and it's just very practical you kick in more muscles here and can help you get onto your hands and knees from a stomach position getting up from the floor using this method is going to require some degree of ankle and toe flexibility if you look closer at this picture, you see that you need a certain amount of ankle dorsiflexion and toe extension. So there's a couple exercises that you can do for that. The first exercise addressing your ankle is a calf stretch. So you can use a book or a block of wood or a half foam roll and put the front half of your feet on there and just let your calves stretch out and let it help stretch the joint. Keep your knees straight when you're stretching this so you get all of your calf muscles. And it should be a comfortable stretch. You stand there for about a minute. If you want more of a stretch, you lean forward more. And a less of a stretch, you lean back more. It shouldn't hurt, but you should feel a good stretch. The second exercise, we're focused on the flexibility of the big toe. And I typically have people do this exercise in a seated position because it's more gentle to the joint. Some people have a lot of arthritis in their big toe and it's difficult to improve their flexibility. So you wanna just see what you can improve on and then if you can't, maybe you may need to use alternative ways to get up from the floor. When you're doing it in a seated position, one hand stabilizes the foot and the other hand moves the big toe back and forth. And then you can also, after you've moved it back and forth a little bit, then you can hold that position for a more prolonged stretch. Lastly, I wanna talk about a couple items that can really help you with getting up and down from the floor. The first one, the knee pads, are really more for comfort than actually physically helping you up. But having the comfort of the knee pads can allow you to move more easily. Now, I've tried many knee pads, and I keep going back to this brand of knee pads, uh, Troxel Super Soft Knee Pads. And just like the name implies, the Super Soft Knee Pads, uh, I've bought a couple pairs for myself, and they're the softest knee pads that I've ever used, and they're extremely comfortable. I don't get a commission. I don't work for the company. I just like to pass on information on good products that I really like. So you'll see a little video explaining those. And then the other device is called the Garden Kneeler. If it's practical for you, you could probably use it in your home as well to help you get up and down from the floor. So let's take a look on how to use them. If you have like sensitive or arthritic knees, uh, knee pads like these are really nice. They make it much more comfortable to get down on the ground or back up. And they're on the inside, there's gel in there. And the nice thing about them is they're easy to get on and take off. And if, you need, if you're doing gardening and you need to move around, uh, you stand up and the knee pads come with you. So let me just show you, it just Velcros. Then you put it around over your knee and then just below the crease of your knee, it Velcros around. Same thing here. And then, so you're gonna get down on the floor, you kneel down, and it makes it really comfortable. If you do a lot of gardening and you wanna be able to get up and down from the kneeling position easily, this has been around for a while. It's a kneeler, and you just open it like that. And then to get down on the ground, it's really nice because this gives a lot of support and then it protects your knees so you don't hurt your knees as you go down. And then you do your thing and then coming back up, this is nice, it's like the armrest coming up, walk your feet forward. And the other thing with this is if you get tired, you flip it over and then you can have a seat. So just another device that you can use to help your, make your life a little bit better. Just to summarize, number one, how you get up from the floor is very individualized since your strength and flexibility vary so much from one person to the next. You should use the method that best works for you. 
Secondly, if you're having trouble, a physical therapist can guide you in the proper exercises. They can also problem solve optimal solutions to get up from the floor individualized to your needs. Number three, exercises to help strengthen your muscles and stretch out tight areas can reduce difficulties with getting up. And lastly, if you're a person who moves better when your PD medications are working, you will gain more benefit from exercising during this time. So if you're an individual that um, when your medications wear off, you're not moving as well, then that's not a time to exercise when your medications are off because you won't be able to stretch as well or do the exercises as easily. So take advantage of your on times when you are able to move better and then you can exercise more easily and get greater benefits because it's easier to do the things that you need to do with your exercise program. Thank you for listening. Bye.